Welcome everybody. Pharaoh David and I are in Egypt and we're here at the home of the world's greatest builders sharing this week's property strategies with you. And we're on the L's. David! Yes, I don't think they Share did. Um, with me. I think commercial to residential here was sort of building a tomb for the, the pharaoh. But anyway, uh, moving swiftly on, um, uh, let's to buy mortgages. We've all heard about buy to let, so we know what that is. But what happens when you turn the whole thing upside down? What, you mean a let to buy? That would be the thing. And uh, that's a kind of relatively new concept, I think, uh, whereby um, before it was kind of pretty standard, really. I'm moving out of my old home uh, and I want to let the uh, uh, let that old home while I buy my new home. Uh, and, and now, of course, there's a, a bit more palaver to go through in order to uh, facilitate that process uh, in that um, I'm... Well, I have to be assessed for a for a, a buy to let mortgage or whatever, and I have to change the uh, the mortgage product, um, which is fine, uh, really, and 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 um, you know meet meet all the the, the, the rental cash flow uh, criteria and, and, and this kind of thing and go through the hoops. It's quite a useful thing to to to, to be able to do because it allows you um, effortlessly while trading up or trading down or or, or trading sideways uh, to just add to the old uh, portfolio, um, and uh, so so I'm quite uh, quite in favour of that. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, anything that I, I, I'm a sort of accumulator. So, some people are traders and they sort of buy it, and they sell it and that kind of thing. One to, thing to point out, I suppose, would be that if your, uh, your buy to let uh, portfolio consists of just one property and your new one, you're going to pay the extra 3% stamp. But for those of us who, who, who just collect them, it, 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 it's no odds. Um, um, but, um, yeah, that. No, it's a great strategy. It's a good uh, way. I mean, if if you've had long term tenants there who want to basically remain in residence, and it might be that Section Twenty Four has caused you to go, listen, tax bill bit too much, need to exit. Um, it might be something that you can come to a, an agreement with them on a let to buy. Ah, well, that's another thing. That's the see. It's a terminology thing here because I call that ter tenant buyer, and I call let to buy uh, moving on to your next principal residence and, and letting out the other one. So, uh, but but you know, it's whatever. <laughs> we we might return to tenant buyers later, though. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we can move swiftly on, can't we? Really to um yeah what's the next one David? this is called liquidity reserve and it's about always having enough water in in the glass because uh, if the glass runs empty uh you're kind of oh oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness i'm here in egypt with no water that's a bit of a problem ask one of the camels to lead you to water they they, they usually have a pretty good uh, idea of where to find it and, and also i hear you can uh, do they have cacti in egypt i'm not sure but if they did you could probably drink it with a drinking straw or something if you're very careful um so um in, in, in terms of um what makes a business I, th I think um if i had to say the one thing that makes a business it is uh, cash flow it's the ability to, to 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 keep paying those bills and and nothing has been more brought this more into sharp focus really than the recent pandemic uh, which has led to um, um rent holidays and not being able to to, to get rid of bad tenants uh, uh, and this kind of thing and mortgage holidays and such like um and the way to, to to weather that kind of storm really is to have i mean i don't know about you but if the ideal thing which i don't have at the moment but the ideal thing is to have six months uh, cash uh, in the in the bank ready to to, to deal with the the, uh, the one the every the once in a hundred year pandemic or other things that come around more often than that often on a sort of once every 18 year thing um but uh it makes sense because then um you don't have to do anything panicky and panicky things are always terribly bad like you might sell a property or something like this and if you need that money quickly as we know property is not a very liquid asset so you'd have to go to the newspaper and find one of those little ads we buy houses fast and, and you'd have to sell it to them for a fiver um if, if, if in the worst case scenario or maybe listed at auction yourself and and, and and spare the middleman um but that's not good that's not good it's it, 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 it's uh, and, and certainly i don't think that asking the tenant to to to, to sub you a couple of grand uh, uh through to next um uh, rent day would, would really kind of work um i i haven't ever actually tried that one but i don't dare to i think uh, something would come flying past my head rapidly and, and rightly so if i were to do so so um 
bottom line is that, that, that property is, is, is about the cash flow. Uh, I mean, all that um, equity is, that you have in the property is very nice, but you can't spend it. Um, and uh, if you don't have the cash, it's going to cause very, very serious problems for your property business. So uh, why not over time, over the course of two or three years, a bit like I did with loo rolls, just, just buy a few, one more pack of loo rolls every week. And then come the pandemic, you don't have to fight with old ladies for the last loo roll in the supermarket. Well, I hope you've got down your stock of loo rolls, David. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to end up with a pyramid loo roll behind us. <laughs> no, ain't that a thought. But no, I mean, uh, I, I think your liquidity is key. Cash is king in your business, and if you're not holding enough reserves, that's not good. Uh, I know a lot of people attempt to do what they term momentum investing, but you're. Uh, trading at the limits, possibly uh, at times over trading uh, by not having enough liquidity within your business. So go careful, manage your ratios and uh, look after your business and protect that cash. Yes, because um, the idea of unforeseen events is that you can't predict them and unforeseen events do happen. Otherwise, there wouldn't be such a word in the dictionary. Yeah, if we could have predicted COVID-19. Oh, we would have, you know, I would have bought a soap factory at, at a knockdown price and, and all the stock and everything. And, you know, ah. well, I, I think there'll be plenty of knockdown prices over the coming 12 months. There will. Uh, there will. Uh, as we get out and as Boris says, spend, spend, spend and build, build, build. Yep. Yep. Uh, indeed. Indeed. It's, uh, it's all very, it's a very interesting uh, property landscape that's uh, un unfailing. Do you know, we'll, we'll soon be on P for pandemic, but not today. That would be a good one. That's a little one I slid in there because some that, that um, I must admit when we started this, that one wasn't on the list, uh, but it is now. No. Well, I think we've got 258, so it's 259 now. Absolutely. 259 was the uh, the frequency of my favourite radio station, Caroline. It was Caroline on 259. Uh, back in the day, showing my age, <laughs> showing my age. Um, that was a while ago, David. <laughs> I, I think the viewers out there probably won't be with us. It was um, that one, so. the Buccaneers. And Let's move on to the next L. Yeah. Uh, LHA uh, tenants. So, 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 so um, that's a, an interesting. It's an area where I have no experience actually because it's not something I've ever done. So I might have to field that one on to to, to, to the more knowledgeable uh, member of the team. Um, to 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 uh, if, if you don't mind being put on the spot and not having been pre-warned about this, it's all like live, folks. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say. Uh, LHA, I don't specifically do L LHA. I, I work with authorities uh, to do specific projects for them. But your local housing uh, association clients, uh, you're, basically you're working on a rent roll of one third maximum of the average rate for the area. So Typically, the stock that you provide into that type of business model is at the bottom one third in terms of quality and price. Uh, so you, you're working in a mass market, but on a low margin, a bit like uh, some of the low margin supermarkets where you need to stack a lot of them to make good margin. Uh, some people make a, a very good business out of this. The repairs and the maintenance can be a lot higher and that is based on the demographic of customer just perhaps not uh, looking after the property quite as well and because they don't have skin in the game in terms of deposits and so forth it's provided by uh, the universal credit system they don't care for your asset quite as much uh, so it's a slightly different LHA model to what I do, uh, but that is the generic LHA model that everybody out there will be familiar with. Yes, and the other thing to remember at, at that end of the market about repairs and such is that uh, a boiler in Chelsea uh, costs the same as a, 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 a boiler somewhere else with, with an LHA tenant, um, and, but it's going to be, in terms of month's rent, uh, it's a very different story. So, so, so there are certain fixed uh, expenses that, that do impact on, on, on that um, level of the sort of rental market just 
by virtue of the, the numbers. It's, uh, if I remember my maths correctly, it's y equals mx plus c, whereby you've got this fixed expense and then there's the sloping graph. It doesn't kind of quite hit the axis there at the bottom it hits it there at the middle so you've got this fixed expense that travels all the way up but uh, as 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 the rent roll gets to you know two grand or three grand a month or something that becomes less significant than if it's say 400 pounds a month or something like that or less yeah and i i think uh, as a little helpful tip for anybody out there looking uh to pursue the lha model if you go to the VOA, the Valuation Office Agency, they have what they call a heat map uh, of rates for your area. And that will tell you the maximum that they're paying because you'll be looking at the one, the, the third quartile and the LHA rates are in that bottom third quartile because the, there is a cap set by uh, government as to what that can be. So you'll have an idea as to what the rent is that you can get. Therefore, you can work your numbers backwards to work out what you can afford to pay to buy your property to get the return that you're seeking. All good. Shall we press on to the next one? Let's go. The next one is a bit sort of um, broad, um, and it's just the, the expression long-term view with the older sort of binoculars looking at the, high, the, the horizon. Um, it's always worth bearing, bearing in mind. Well, I mean... Not everybody needs to take a long term view. If you're a property trader buying and selling stuff, it can, the, 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 especially if you're selling at auction, the whole thing can be done in a matter of weeks. But um, for the rest of us, um, um, who are probably in the majority, um, it, 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 it's because property is generally illiquid. Um, as an asset, um, it's not something where you can, you know, cash in your shares in Enron quickly if you're quick enough. Uh, um, then, um, in terms of property. Particularly with the legals and things like that, it's going to take what? Uh, e even when you find a buyer for it, it's going to take, going to take at least two months to, to, to tie up all the loose ends. Um, and then again, if you're, for example, buying in an area which many do uh, for capital growth, well, that ain't going to happen in two months. Uh, that, that's for sure. And you've got the, the initial transactional costs of, of, of buying it anyway. So, but once we look at a five-year, a ten-year, or even dare I say, in my case, a thirty-eight-year horizon, uh, the, the the picture becomes much rosier because um, the properties that I was picking up for uh, don't have them anymore. But the properties that I was picking up in London for um, eighty thousand pounds in the uh, in the uh, glorious nineteen eighties are now wait for it about seven to eight hundred thousand. So 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 um, there you go. Uh, obviously. Uh, as a new entrant, that rather messes things up um, because uh, the rents clearly haven't gone up by a factor of 10, uh, sadly. Um, but um, again, timing is everything, isn't it, really? So, so, so for people who got in at the right point in the market uh, and take a very long term view, um, even I mean, I was an accidental landlord and my long term view was just um, forced upon me by not having any better ideas at the time. Uh, and and and, um, and 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 so, but you know, it can work in your favour. It can work in your favour. And um, and property, you know, we do live on an island. There is uh, only a limited amount of property there. And although the, the principal drivers um, with, with with property drivers, it's a thing, if I remember, called mortgage credit impulse. The scope of which is beyond uh, something that we could explain in two minutes on this video. Although we could do a specialist uh, uh, video on that once we've uh, finished the A to Z, I think that'd be a good one to discuss. Um, so, so supply and demand isn't the the entire um, whole picture. And it's a bit bit of a superficial thing. But anyway, um, the fact that we are an island means that. In general, though, to be fair, Japan is also an island. But anyway, uh, on the whole, and, and, and taking the rough with the smooth and looking at the historic things, which we know we can't do entirely, uh, over the long term, uh, one's kind of idiot short term uh, early stage investor mistakes are corrected over time as the values of the property kind of slowly rises. Um, it's not the best way to run your property business, but it is very important in property to take that long term view. No. Totally. I mean, long term view is what it's all about. If you were to look at, say, um, pension funds, they invest in predominantly commercial, but of late they have been investing in the uh, purpose built uh, social housing sectors and they've been pumping several billion into that sector. They're taking a long term 30 year view and 
that 30 year view that they take is they invest in the stock, they build it out, they lease it to a local authority, and it gives them a constancy of return for their funds, their pension funds, and therefore uh, it, it matches income versus uh, outgoings and it also achieves the desired returns. So you have to look at property as it's a long-term view, a bit like a pension, because that's what pension companies are investing in, the same as you. Indeed. Um, shall we progress? Absolutely. This is another LTV, or perhaps a much more familiar LTV for many people, loan to value. And uh, so hence the amount of money that the, uh, the bank or other financial institution will advance you uh, relative to the uh, value, perceived value, the valuation of the property. And uh, when I started... Um, I remember getting a uh, loan to values of 105 or 110 percent. That was some um, quite easy to to achieve, really. And um, um, those days at the moment have gone. But who's to say that they won't come again at some future point? We can't know because uh, it, it's always a constant. Um, what, what should we say? A constant um, tension between regulators and lending institutions as to how much the lending institutions can lend and how much the regulators can kind of turn the screw and clamp down. And, and you have to get the balance right because uh, uh, the market either overheats or shrivels away to nothing. And so it is a sort of constant thing, which is, is, is a sort of flux. Uh, and I think um, loan to value dep varies as well, depending on whether you're an investor doing buy to let or whether you're a, a, a first time buyer. In troubled times, such as we have at the moment, we might find that the value of the loan uh, to value uh, decreases so that the... Uh, is that a flying camel, I see? Good heavens. <laughs> Whatever next? It's something. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure, David. I think it was. I think it was. I, you can tell by the humps. Um, so as uh, as the, um, the, the, the property... The, the idea of having a deposit in, in, in your properties so that you've got, as, as, as you said earlier, skin in the game. And so um, the bank wants to know it, it's a little sort of safety cushion uh, for the bank. And, and, and another way of looking at this is, is people will tell you that uh, if you're uh, let's suppose you, you buy a hundred thousand uh, pound buy to let property. And let's suppose that the value of that hundred thousand uh, pound property goes up only by twenty, only by twenty five percent, goes up by a quarter. So it's now worth um, one hundred and twenty five thousand pounds. Well, you know that's not what's happened for you because your twenty five thousand pounds take has just doubled. So, 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 so this kind of leverage thing is 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 is, is pretty damn good uh, for investors. Uh, and they teach it a lot on courses. They forget to mention uh, they I've never heard a single uh, uh, course or coach or whatever mention that if your hundred thousand pounds should by any chance go down to 75, you've lost your deposit. Um, so so people forget to mention that it's very important to mention that that, that there is risk as, as, as well as reward for doing that kind of thing. Uh, if I ever found myself in the position of having lost my deposit and if the rents were still coming in and if they were ser servicing the mortgage, guess what? I would just keep it. And, and, and over time, the value would creep up again, which is which comes back to what we were saying earlier about long term view that that, that um, short term blips do tend to correct uh, eventually because um, the fundamental needs that we have as, a, as, as, as humans are what um, shelter, uh, food and, and fresh air, which at the moment is free until they find a way of bottling it. Um, and and, and uh, food comes and goes because supermarket chains do go pop sometimes or got taken over or, 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 or this kind of thing. But that, that bit of property um, is to all intents and purposes until I think uh, pandemics might come around every hundred years, but comets only strike the world every 60 million, is it? So I think we're pretty safe with the old property there. Um, and um, so therefore, it's a good it, it, it's a good asset into which to sink your cash and, and, and leave it. And over time, because of the leverage thing and because for the past X hundred years, there has been this 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 long term uh, upward strategy. It will grow your cash much faster a than in the bank, but also much faster than in equities, because uh, the last time I checked, banks and lending institutions don't anymore, although they used to, which caused the 1929 crash. They don't uh, lend you money to buy equities anymore, but they will lend you money to buy a property. Yeah. Uh, well, loan to value, it's leveraging somebody else's money 
to effectively get to where you want. And the, the thing I'd probably add on to that that a lot of people don't necessarily understand and, and follow is the loan to values are also used as a tool by the lenders not only to manage uh, the liquidity of the lender within uh, the regulatory framework as David indicated but also uh, to take account of economic risk and at this moment in time there's market uncertainty because of coronavirus and what the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors and the lenders are saying to the surveyors who go out is look there's a degree of risk in the market. We're not quite sure where it's going. Therefore, we'll use our loan to value tool to actually hedge out that risk. Because if we think prices are going to fall 20% and normally we'd lend on a 75% loan to value, maybe we might crank the loan to value down to 60%. And we saw it down as low as 50% at the, the height of the coronavirus pandemic. So it's used as a tool by the lenders where they're not sure where the, the market is going and in times of uncertainty where the market is likely to fall like a knife, then they use that tool as a means of hedging against the risk. In other words, you've got more skin in the game and they've got less skin in the game and the market's got to fall a long way before they lose a, a pound. Yes, that's, that's it in a nutshell, isn't it? Bottom line, yep, uh, totally, totally. It is. Well, I, I hate to tell you, David, but we've got to get on our Arabian carpet and fly out of here now. Ah. And we will see you all next week. I believe we're on our travels again next week. So until then, goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. Thank you very much, everyone. See you next week. <laughs>